to get something up there. All right, so talk to me. A student bought two juice pouches of, for $1.25 each and three bags of chips. The total cost was $5.05. What is the solvent equation to determine the cost of the bag of chips? So your variable is what? C. C. All right, so yesterday, let's go back and talk about, yes, what is the knee jerk or the immediate equation that you, what we called our easy equation? Does anybody, I mean, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Anybody? I mean, look, talk to me. What are you thinking? We know we've got two juice pouches for $1.25 each. So we know we're going to have two times $1.25, right? And we know that we got three bags of chips, but we don't know how much they cost, do we? So we got three bags of chips, and we don't know how much they cost, right? Wouldn't you have to divide the two times 1.25? Isn't that the total? But wait a minute, why? And then we know, all right, I'm just putting down what we know. And then we know that our total is $5.05, right? This is our juice. This is our chips. And there's our total. That's just what's in the problem. Everybody with me? And then you would just subtract um, two times one, or you would multiply those and then subtract it from five. The We're million. not trying to get an answer. We're trying to write an equation. Or just add it. Say that again. Add it. Or what if I said, what if I did this? What if I put words in there for a minute? This. And this is this, right? Do you agree? Does that make sense? So and would be and is is equals to, right? So then plug those signs back in. So what do we have? We've got two times 125 plus three C equals five dollars and five cents. Now you could go ahead and multiply that. Which is gonna be two fifty, right? Two fifty plus three C equals five dollars and five cents. I don't like it looking like that, but you you can switch it around and write three C plus two fifty equals five oh five. What allows me to do that, Aisha? The commutative property. Very good. Okay. There is no way. I mean, do you see how I kind of just wrote down what was there? And if you look on the other paper, it has it broken down like that. It says, I know, I need to know, plan on work. You know, there's a, a, a plan for you there. Getting it don't just start writing down what you got in front of you. And I'm telling you that because I... Even I have to kind of stop and really think about what's here. You're not going to get this just, it's not going to just fly up in your head. You've got to think about it. Does everybody understand this? Does that make sense? Do you have any issues on getting an answer there? Because I'm going to move on. You don't have any trouble getting the answers. You need help writing the equations. Am I right? So I'm not going to solve the equations for you. I'm just going to let you answer them, and then I'll put the key on Google Classroom for you. So let me how I have to listen. Do we have to solve it? Like, do we have to find the answer of C? You do have to. You are going to solve the equations, but I'm going to move on through and help you write the equations, and then you can come back and solve it. So where it says variable, we just put C? Is C is it? the variable, yes. C is the variable. Now, this is not me solving. I mean, that, well, that was, okay. The equation for this one would be 250 plus 3C equals 505. And then you need to solve it and get a solution. But not right now because we're fixing to move on to number two. But we can write it where it's 2 multiplying 1.25. You can write this one as your equation and then show all the steps to solve it, yes. You can put this one as your equation or you can put this one as your equation, either one. 
Carissa, is all of this showing up on that screen? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Number two. Four brothers each bought two hot dogs and a bag of chips at the football concession stand. If the bag of chips was 125 and the total was 1820, what was the price of one hot dog? All right. So, what is our variable going to be? What are we? What is the unknown? What do we don't know? What are we trying to find? Uh, all all their ages. Or how old is the youngest of them? Like what grandma? That's number, number three. Two. Oh, that's number three. I've got one down. I just read it out loud. I know, but I was looking I, at number three because I thought we're going down and then swapping over. Okay, but I read number two out loud. I'm not able to hear. I can't hear very well. If if the bag of chips, are you? Can you hear that? A little bit. Was a dollar twenty-five, and the total was eighteen twenty. What was the price of one hot dog? What is our unknown? The price of the hot dog. Hot dog. So, what do we want to use as our variable? Uh, P. P for price or H for hot dog. H for hot dog. Hot dog. I my brain went straight to H. I'm gonna just put a dollar sign right there, just for we're not gonna put that in the equation, but right now I want to know the cost of a hot dog. Yes, thank you. All right. So now. What do we have in this problem? What do we, let's start dissecting the problem. You ready? What do I have? I've got four brothers. All right? And each one of those brothers bought two hot dogs and chips. Right? And the chips cost a dollar twenty-five. Now look at what I'm doing. I am just writing down what I see in the problem. I'm just getting it on paper. Okay. <coughs> I'm getting what I'm doing is I'm getting all these other extra words out of my way. I need them gone. I need anything that doesn't ap apply to me solving this problem. All right. So the chips were dollar twenty-five, and my total for all of this was eighteen dollars and twenty cents. Okay. $18.20. So, what do you think? Like, do we know how to solve the problem, or do we think... Well, all right, tell me what your approach would be. How would you start? Where do you... Don't tell me how to solve the problem. I want to know how to <laughs> solve, how to write the equation. What is going to be your first? Anybody want to take a gander at the first step of writing the equation? Would you do 4H? Like the four brothers each bought two hot dogs. But four brothers each bought this. Tell me what the equation would be for one brother. Um, I got, here's brother number one, brother number two, brother number three, and brother number four. One point twenty-five plus two H equals. All right, you don't have to give me an equals. Just tell me the expression for one brother. One point twenty-five plus two. So two H plus one twenty-five. That's what one person spent, right? Do you agree with that? You can put that as one outside of Exactly. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you. So this second brother bought that. The third brother bought this. And the fourth brother also bought this. Right? So to write that four times, four, two H plus 125. And it all equaled 1820. Yeah, I forgot what parentheses were. <coughs> That's why I'm doing these with you. All right. Did that make sense? Carissa, what is it? 
You want to get to the answer. I don't want the answer. This is the answer for right now. I don't care that you know how to solve that equation. I need to know that you can write it. Okay? What is it? You just have this look on your face like, you're, you're okay. Everybody okay? Ready? For number three. Hey, Justin, why don't you read number three to us? The ages of three siblings are all consecutive integers. There's, the sum of their uh, ages is 39. How old is the youngest sibling? Okay, so let's talk about what consecutive integers are. Consecutive integers are numbers that are one. So, for example, two, three, and four are consecutive integers. Okay? Those are consecutive integers in order. Okay? So when you're working with the consecutive integers, you've got to start, your variable is going to be the age of, it's going to be the smallest integer, okay? So A is going to be my lowest number, okay? Now, how did I get from here to here? Exactly. What did I add one to? Two. Okay. So if two is A, two is not two anymore, two is A, what is the expression for finding the second number in the sequence? Plus. Plus what? <coughs> it ain't plus one. Plus one. It's plus A plus one. You don't know what A is. I know A is my first integer. I don't know what A is, but A is my first integer, okay? So it's something. And I know to get from it to the next number, I have to add one. So now my next number is A plus one, okay? You with me? So how do I get from my original to my next number? Exactly. Plus A plus 2. All right? So how many did it say? Three? So we got three. So here we go. We got three siblings. And we want to know how old is the youngest. Well, the youngest is going to be your smallest in that sequence. Okay? So A is the youngest. Now, once you get it written, I wrote the parentheses. I put the parentheses up here so that you could see that this is the youngest. This is the second sibling, and this is the third sibling, okay? But once we get ready to solve this, we can drop the parentheses. Those parentheses are not doing anything except grouping together the expression to represent that sibling. Does that make sense? They're serving no purpose. There's no distributed property. There's, there, this is just being used as a grouping symbol to show you that A plus 1 is your second child. A plus 2 is your third child. Okay? They're not serving a purpose. So because they're not really serving a purpose, I'm going to drop them. So then I just combine like terms. Okay? So 3A plus 3 equals, and what did it say their age is equal? 39. 39. Now I'm subtract 3 from both sides, and 3a equals 36. Divide both sides by 3, and a equals 12. So the youngest is 12. So a plus 1 means that this must be like, you know, and this is. <coughs> 
That's about it. That's about right, too. That's Leah, KK, and Asia. <laughs> Ask her. Aren't y'all about, aren't y'all at 12? 13, 12? 13, 13. But some of y'all are 12. I mean, 12 is a pretty standard 7th grade age to start off with, right? She may be in the 13 range, but for the most part, that's about them. Because KK's in the 8th grade and Naisha's in the 9th grade. Hmm? Where's your kids? Where's your kids? Where's your kids? No, it's Leah Kendall that's on our Leah that's on our team. I would die if I had three kids. Three. She's the baby of the three. She's the baby of three. Those the three girls. It's Leah, KK, and Asia. Oh. All right. Anyway, questions. Does that make sense? Do you need a minute? Twelve is the answer to that question. I just wanted you to see how you could get all three. Well, is the answer to that one. All right, I'm going to give you about five minutes or so. I want you to do four, five, and see if you can do four, five, and six. Write the equation. I don't want you to solve them. If you get the equations written, you can go back and go ahead and solve number one and two. Um, but try three, try four, five, and six. Those of you on video, stop the video for a minute, pause it, try four, five, and six, and then start it back up after you get them done. So I'm gonna pause the video and then um, come back in about five minutes. Yeah. All right, so here we go. Number four. All right, so number four. The length and width of a rectangle is eight more than twice its width. The perimeter is 96. Find the dimensions of the rectangle. So I'm going to do this from a thinking math perspective, okay? Let's look at how we can break this apart, because that's what a brace map is all about, breaking it apart, okay? So when you're trying to use a brace map to do word problems, I always, the word problem is the whole, because a, a brace map is all about a part to whole. So we're going to take this whole problem, and we're going to break it into its parts, and then write our equation, okay? So I just put a question mark right there to represent that the word problem is my whole instead of writing the word problem, okay? But the word problem is the whole piece. We know that we're working with a rectangle, okay? And the rectangle is kind of our frame of reference. It's not really part of what we need to solve this problem. We got to know we're working with a rectangle, but it kind of becomes part of our frame of reference, okay? It's going to be that background knowledge. The other thing that's in the problem that's background knowledge is perimeter. Who remembers how to find perimeter? What is it? You're adding the sides. So you've got length plus length plus width plus width, right? So the equate or the expression for finding perimeter would be 2L plus 2W, right? Is everybody with me there? Okay. So that's kind of that background knowledge. That would be kind of the information that would go in the frame of reference. So in our problem, it tells us we've got to, we know we've got to have a length and a width, right? So what does it tell us about the length? The length is eight more than twice the width. We've been given information about the length, but we've been given nothing about the width, right? So what's your variable going to be? W. w. Your variable's going to be W. Okay? So if we know that the variable is W, then the length is 8 more than twice the width. So L is going to be equal to 2W plus 8, right? Is everybody with me there? So L is equal to 2W plus 8, and then we have W, right? So now when we come into 
when we get ready to do this equation, 2 times L plus 2 times W, okay? What is L? What is L? Right. I, I can't solve an equation that has two different variables in it, can I? So I've got to write this equation with one variable. So two, and then the parentheses, and then 2w plus 8 parentheses, and then exactly. plus 8 I'm not going to insert. So if I told you the length was 6, what would you put in for L right there? A six, right? You would substitute, you would plug it in, plug it in, right? And you would put a six right here, right? So I'm, but I'm telling you that L is this. So I'm going to put two times, and this is L. Two W plus eight plus two times W. I, because I've got to write this, I can't solve until I've got all, until I've got one variable. Okay, that makes sense. No, let's back up. If I gave you this equation. And I said L equals 6, and we don't know W, okay? How would you solve that? Wouldn't you, wouldn't you do this? Wouldn't you do that? That's the same thing I did. Only this time, instead of L being a 6, L was an expression. So I took L is, this is is, L is 2W plus 8. So if L is 2W plus 8, I'm going to take 2W plus 8 and put it in the place of L. Okay? You're posting this video and everyone's in the classroom, right? Mm -hmm. And that gets me an expression with one variable in it. Now I can do this, and I'll work this all the way out for you. 2 times 2w is 4w plus 16 plus 2w. And it was equal to, do we have a total? Yeah, 96. We had a total, which was 96. you got to have a total for it to be an equation, okay? 96. Combine like terms, 6W plus 16 equals 96. Can you finish it from there? You would subtract 16 from both sides and divide by 6. All right, so let's do it. 96 minus 16 is 80, 80 right? So 6W equals 80. I went from there to here. 6W equals 80. Divide both sides by 6. And W equals what? 13.3 repeated. So it doesn't come out here. Alright, so we're going to call it 13.3. Okay? That's the width. But the question asked you for the dimensions, didn't it? Yeah, find the dimensions. That's the width. So how do I find the length? You do it's thirteen point three. Thirteen point three. Thirteen point three. To find the length, I have to go back to this. Two L plus two W equals ninety six. Two L plus two W equals ninety six, and put in one thirteen point three for W. 2L plus 
13.3 equals 96. Subtract 13.3 from both sides. And 2L equals what? What's 96 minus 13.3? 82.1 and then divide that by 2 41.35 so I'm going to call it 41.4 The answer is, the so when you get to the end, W equals 13.3 and L equals 41.4. I get everything when you're doing it, like when we're doing it with you, but when we're just doing it by ourselves, I don't get it. That's why you have to go back and rewatch the videos while you're doing it and don't let it just be background noise. Okay? Because it, this is seventh grade math. Do you have all this on your paper? Now the next one we're about to do is not really. And this is probably the very top, top level of seventh grade. This is really to, I mean, it's really, but the next one is really more eighth grade but we're gonna go ahead and do it. All right, you ready? Which one's the equation? Right here. That would be your equation. Two times two W plus eight times plus two W equals nine. That would be your original equation. <coughs> that would be the equation. That's the equation that's gonna get you W. And then from there, you can get L. This is this is the equation that's going to get you W right here. That's your equation. All right. This one's a good one. These are my favorites. I love them. All right. So. The thing that, the red flag that went up for me on number six, where it went woo, was the fact that it had two totals. We're not going to do number five? Oh. Well, heck, I want to do number six. Yes, we're going to do number five. <coughs> All right, number six, five. A birthday party. Miss Perkins ordered eight chocolate chip cookies and 16 sugar cookies. Each cookie is the same price. He also picks up a cupcake for himself, which costs two seventy five. What is the total bill? So... We only have one total right here, so we're good. So what do we know? We What did he buy? He bought cookies. He bought a cupcake. And he had a total. Right? Those cookies. He bought eight. And he bought... He bought eight, what was it, eight, I'm looking at my name, eight chocolate chip and 16 sugar and 16 sugar. And he, the cupcake, he just bought one and it was $2.75, right? Mm -hmm. And his total was $44.03, right? What more do we know about the chocolate chip cookies and the sugar cookies? They're the same price. We know that these, these cost the same. Okay? We know those cost the same. <coughs> Who wants to take a gander? What? So what variable did you use? Why? For cookies. Okay? So what you got? 24C plus 2.75 is 40. All right, go back. I need, I need to know how you got 24. 16 plus 8. Yeah, but that's not going to show me 
everything that's in there. Could you? Oh, oh you did 24. So I, okay, since they cost the same, you could call this 24. I'll give you that. You could call that 24. Could you distribute with like C on the outside and then 8 plus 16 in the parentheses to make it? All right. C plus C. All right. So Colton. All right. So Colton, you. Did, all right. Here is. All right. Let's do this. We're gonna do. Here. Pick a color. Carissa. Uh, purple. Here's Carissa. Twenty four C plus two point seven five equals forty four point zero three. Carissa is correct. That is an equation that would get you to the answer. That's right. All right. Colton, what you got? C distributes 8 plus 16. All right, so C distributes to 8 plus 16. Plus 2.75 equals. Plus $2.75. Equals 44.03. All right, Colton is correct. He's going to have more steps to solving his equation, but that's okay. You can add 16 plus 8 right there because the parentheses actually tell you to do that first. And you're going to get 24C. Or you can distribute that and say 8C plus 16C. And 8C plus 16C is 24C. Okay? What's going to happen is no matter how you go about it, you're going to end up right here. You're going to end up right there to finish. Everybody is going to end up right here to finish. You may put, you may have, like Colton, you may have something that looks different to start with, but eventually it's going to get you to that. Okay? I just did one, And that's okay. That's, I mean, and that's fine. That is not wrong. That's the one thing about this is, you know, there's going to be a little bit of, of flexibility in, but, and that's why you're having to solve them, because it, in your solving it, I'm going to see that 24C plus $2.75 equals 4403 as you're solving it and working through it. You're going to eventually get to that point. Okay? Ah, oh, we don't have time for number six. Okay. We're not going to stress it. Um, we will look at it though. Um, so we may or may not come back to this a little bit more tomorrow, but we may move on, on move on ahead. You are gonna just know that writing writing equations from word problems is part of 